A young pastor and his wife receive a devastating diagnosis for their baby girl. The reaction? Unwavering, unreasonable hope. Find out why their story is inspiring people around the world to get a G tattoo on today's 700 Club Interactive. Good morning and welcome to the program. When things go horribly wrong, how do you still believe in God's goodness? How do you hold on to hope? If you're looking for an answer to those questions and you may not want what we would consider the typical Sunday school answer, you're going to want to hear from our guest today, Chad Beach. When Chad and his wife Julia gave birth to their first child, a beautiful baby girl named Georgia, they couldn't have been happier. But it didn't take long to see their little girl wasn't thriving. And doctors soon discovered Georgia had an incurable brain disease. And Chad had a decision to make, give in to despair or choose to hope. I'll never forget when our daughter was just four months old. She was diagnosed with a rare brain disorder called mesencephaly. I remember my wife and I feeling so overwhelmed, pain, agony, defeat. I remember that's when we really felt a sense that we could put all of our confidence and all of our hope in Jesus. And when we put our hope in God, it's because the evidence found Him to be truthful, trustworthy and loyal no matter what we're going through. Hope is the architect and faith is the builder. We posted this photo, this Instagram of us with our G's and it really just took off and became something that you know no one could have ever foreseen. We're people from strangers that we don't know to celebrities to you know family members are getting this tattoo and it's all to say we're believing for this girl to be healed, but we're also believing for ourselves. I think it speaks to the beauty of humanity. Well, joining us now is Chad Veach, pastor of Zoe Church in Hollywood and author of Unreasonable Hope, the book with the big pink G. <laughs> <laughs> right. Talk about this big pink G. It, it, it really is. It's become the symbol of, you know, our message. Yes. Uh, it, you know, G is for my daughter, Georgia. It's, you know, her name. And I think it represents, you know, I always say it's it's Georgia, it's it's God, yes. and it's grace. Yes. And, um, <laughs> you know, people started getting these tattoos for our, yeah. our daughter and it just... It became, it's his life of its own. She is so adorable. And she's you. really a beautiful little girl. <laughs> Tell me about her condition. I had never heard of this before. Yeah, neither had we. Yeah. It's called lysencephaly is the medical term, but in simple terms, it's just smooth brain. Yeah. So what that means is, you know, all of our brains have folds all throughout. Hers is just smooth. It just didn't form for whatever yeah. reason. So that's her condition. And uh, with that, you know, it's every developmental yeah. issue, walking, talking, crawling. So really, that was the diagnosis we received for her. Uh, you know, you you so eloquently share just the challenges, the highs and lows of getting a diagnosis like this. And in one chapter, you had titled it, um, She Will Never. Right. What parent wants to hear that? Unbelievable. I mean, right. what did the doctors tell you when she was diagnosed? Yeah, a lot of nevers. She'll wow. never walk. She'll never talk. She'll never crawl. I, I just, when we walked out of there, I had a sense, oh. doctors never have the last say. You wanna talk about a never, they never have the last yeah. say. God's word does, God has the last say. So yeah. that's where faith started to stir in me from the beginning of going, a doctor may say this, but yeah. there's this hope, Yeah. there's this, this person that I believe can defy the never. And she kind of has, hasn't she? Absolutely, she's, she's thrived, she's done better than you know, the doctors ever could have expected. She starts school in a couple yeah. weeks. Wow. She's doing great. But Chad, let's talk about the journey because, you know, I know there are many of you who are with us right now and you have your own impossible, you can't, the door's closed, you will never, yeah. or you always will have to. Yeah. This has been a journey of incredible surrender and yeah. pain and just steadfastness. Yeah. Tell us about, there was the diagnosis day mm -hmm. and then there was the seizure day. Yeah. And that changed everything. Absolutely. 
And I think, you know, you get a diagnosis day, you get a seizure day. You never know what kind of, what the day right. may bring. Right, I, I just, I, I live from the premise, it's always too early to quit. Yeah. And if you don't quit, you win. The winners are those that just keep going, yeah. keep believing. I think we have too many people that quit on their marriages, yeah. quit on their dreams, quit on God when the going gets tough. I think about people like Job. Job's yeah. inspired me. When you face something like this, you go, I can relate with that guy. Yes. Job says things like, though he may slay me, yet I'll praise him. Yeah. We just made that decision. No matter what the doctor says on a diagnosis day, or if our daughter has a bunch of seizures, we're still going to keep going yeah. keep smiling and keep believing and having hope. You said bunch of seizures and that's pretty accurate. I mean, some days 50 and sometimes lasting five minutes long. I mean, how yeah. do you contend with that? Yeah, it, that's the, the question, how? I, I, I don't know. I, all I know is that we have a supernatural strength. If yeah. it was by my own strength, I could not endure that. But we have found in our weakness, mm -hmm. God's really come through and given us a strength that's, I know it's yeah. not mine. And so that's where we've had to turn to him and put our hope in him. And I don't put my hope in the result for her healing. Mm -hmm. I put my hope that I need, I need his help every day. Yeah, second to second. Here you are pastoring a church. That's a big <laughs> job. Yeah. And a lot of people are watching you. And mm -hmm. so while you're ministering to a lot of people throughout the day that are a part of your church, you speak, you write, Julia's at home mm. with Georgia and experiencing a lot of these things we're talking about that aren't, it's not that they're just that they're devastating, surely they are that, yeah. but just the ongoing frustration of vomiting, incapability of swallowing. Right. Uh, I mean, just your mother's heart aching. Yeah. How do the two of you stay tight through yeah. all of this? Thank God for technology. Yeah. You know, even today mm -hmm. I'm away, but we're FaceTiming, we're sending videos back and forth. Yeah. We're able to still stay connected. And I'm so I'm so grateful for community yeah. that, you know, even last night I'm away, but there's four girls at the house helping her Praise do the God. bath time. Yeah. And that's the, you know, I always go, how do people do it without church? Yeah. Church is such a strong community. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it is, is yeah people rallying around our family and being yeah. together. So we, we don't know how we make it work. We just, we yeah. make it work and, and we do everything we can. Our goal is health in our home. Mm -hmm. Even if you have sickness in your house, you can still have health in your marriage, health in your soul yeah. and health in your home. But you gotta work at that. Yeah, you gotta absolutely. work at that. And I, you know, th what you're talking about, that kind of friendship and support and coming alongside, that's the church without walls. Yep. And in, George's condition, you have experienced that in a way that most of us don't yeah. experience it. Yeah. Talk about the, the tat. <laughs> yeah, the tattoo. I, you know, it's amazing. I, if, when this thing started to take off, this people started getting these tattoos to support our daughter. We're standing with you. We're believing with you. It, my first thought was, isn't that humanity? Yeah. We, we, we tend not to celebrate with success, but we rally around pain. We're up for the fight. Yeah. That's that's humanity. And so I started to sense people rallying around us, but then it, it turned somewhere to where this symbol, this G, it's it's now symbolic of their own pain. Yeah. Of people saying, I've got an aunt that's sick, I've got a you know, a friend that passed away. Yeah. And so G really is a symbol of hope. It's not just Georgia alone, mm -hmm. but it stands for something. Yeah. And it's unbelievable to have people, you know, I got tagged in a photo recently three ladies, they must have been in their 40s to 50s, and they're holding up their, their G's G. Really? For, for, yeah. for my daughter. It's an unbelievable, surreal experience. Oh my goodness, it has to be just so encouraging. Absolutely, encouraging that's it. Encouraging to see God using it. Throughout the book, I want to mention, I, I love this because, you know, in the end, we all need to come back to the Word. Yeah. And so you take these struggles and victories and the things that you've gone to, and you you kind of correlate them to things that have gone on in the Word of God. Like, I'm yeah. a lover of the Joseph story. Yeah. I mean, I just, it so unfair, but so much goodness because he endured. Absolutely, you know? he didn't quit. Right, and then you mentioned Job and the woman mm. with the, yeah. the issue of blood. Absolutely. And I mean, throughout, how, how did you decide when you were gonna write this? I mean, it's been several years now that you've yeah. walked this journey. What you'd put in? Well, I think, you know, hope is not hype. Yeah. Hope is built on facts. It's built on evidence. And when you survey the facts, 
you go, okay, I can put my hope in God. Well, where do yeah. we get the facts? Yes. We get it from the Bible. Exactly. So as I read the Bible, I'm like, if God did it for Joseph, if God did it for Job, if he did it for Daniel, if he did it for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I started building the evidence and a mm -hmm. case for God. And I, I conclude, yes, I can put my confidence in yes. God. Look at what he did for them. I know he can do it for me. Yes, and and that he wants to. You know, the Absolutely. word is just so filled with the promises of yeah. God. And when you're going through the kind of things like you and Julia have and are going through, mm. that's the parachute, the hope, the yeah. <laughs> everything. Absolutely. Yeah. So where is Georgia at today? Yeah. So, you know, Georgia, I always say she's she's a fighter. Some days she does great and she's yeah. thriving and she's doing really well. And other days, you know, Yes. turn for the sickness or the worse. But I think today, Georgia's doing better than she's ever done. Mm -hmm. She's happy, she's starting school. She, now, how do you do that when seizures are involved? Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, the medicine, we just try and really monitor her medicine. And, you know, if the seizures kick up, we gotta increase. And we just try and watch it's her really a carefully. day to day. It's a hour dance. Hour by hour dance. It is, it yeah. is. But you know, um, I'm so thankful for the government that has provided schooling for our daughter. Wow. And we get to take her five days a week for four hours yeah. a day. That's unbelievable. Yeah. It's a break for my wife. And it's Georgia being cared for by four teachers. She's yeah. got five classmates. I mean, that is a blessing. So we just, we try and look for evidence of his presence yeah. rather than evidence of his absence, that God's working in our family. You're so candid in the book about some of the challenges that come along the way. I'm not even talking about the major medical things, but just things like going places with your extended family yeah. that would be places of joy and celebrating your child's fun and joy, where they, they only seem to accentuate what Georgia wasn't going to be able to do yeah. and what you weren't going to be able to experience. Yeah, it's one thing to be in your house with a sick kid. Yeah. You know, it's another to be around family and to look at another girl that's her age and go, oh, that's what she should be doing. That's what a three-year-old looks and, like. And yeah. I think that's where, you know, we need God because you're going to face yeah. these things where your emotions get stirred again, the memory, the, yeah. you know, you start to recall those experiences. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sometimes in life you, you face a tragic incident and other times you face a storm that may last a while. Yes. I think that we need God in both situations. Yeah, absolutely, and in those storms, you know, are the places where I think we most need that Holy Spirit reminder, yes. I'm over here, yep. come back this way, we're yep. going this way, and your book is so clearly that. I wanna share a couple of, you know, we're in interactive shows, yeah. so we have friends with us right now who are Great. online, so I just wanna share some things that we've received yeah. online. This is, let me give you this one. Steve writes, my best friend's daughter, Hannah, mm. is currently at St. Jude's Hospital. She's dying from a rare form of leukemia. The mm. doctors say she only has months to live Please pray for Hannah's complete healing. And then here's one from Kim. She says, my son and his wife are missionaries in Africa. My daughter-in-law, Jen, just recovered from malaria. Now my son, Chris, has come down with wow. it. Please pray he's healed in Jesus' name. So yeah. w would you just speak to our audience through the lens Absolutely. with words of hope, and then would you pray? Absolutely. Well, you know, I can say to both leukemia and malaria, yeah. God's bigger, he's greater, Jesus didn't die for a few sicknesses. He died for all sicknesses. Amen. And today we can put all of our hope in God. You know, hope is this architect and faith is the builder. So hope gives us this expectation and faith allows us to walk it out every day. We're speaking to, you know, whether you're in Africa or whether you're in St. Jude's Hospital, wherever you're at today, we can put our hope in Jesus because He is hope. He literally is the hope for humanity. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Your Son, Jesus Christ, we declare healing power over those that are facing tragedy, even sickness and disease. We say that your name is above all names. It's above leukemia, mm -hmm. it's above malaria, it's above divorce, it's above anything we're going through. We declare that you are with every person today. You're fighting their battles. Thank you that you promised when the enemy comes in like a flood, you're gonna raise a standard against them. Amen. We declare your word and we thank you in advance for all these things mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Well, I just want to say, first of all, thank you to you, Chad, not just thank for you. being here, but for the book as well. And I want you all to know you can read all about Georgia, the impact she's making in Chad's book. It's called Unreasonable Hope. 
in my opinion, every believer should read this because we're all doing life and life right. has mountains and life has valleys. This is available wherever books are sold. And um, if you live or you're visiting the Los Angeles area, check out Chad's church. Just go to zoechurch.org to find out more. Thank you. Thank you so, so great much. to have you here. Yeah, what an honor. Andrew, over to you. Thank you both so much. Well, why are these expectant mothers in Mexico smiling? When we come back, we'll tell you how CBN is using fish to fight the Zika virus. Stay with us. Well, it's come to our attention that many of you don't realize or, or haven't been exposed to just how much CBN is doing all around the world. Andrew and I want to share what's happening just this week in three countries. First of all, I want you to meet Valeska, who's from Peru. She's part of an Operation Blessing preschool program. Two years ago, Valeska didn't have friends at school and was behaving badly at home. Now, she interacts well with other children and her behavior has drastically improved. Obi also helped her family protect their home during the rainy season, which is considerably difficult there. Also in Peru, we'd like you to meet Maidal, Linda, and Luz. They're smiling because their school just received two renovated classrooms from Operation Blessing. Linda says, in the past, we used to study in really bad classrooms. We'd get wet when it rained, and it was very hot in the summer. But now, thanks to you, our generous supporters, these children can receive a quality education and concentrate on learning. Great news, Terry. Mm -hmm. let's, let's profile another uh, situation here. Casey is a little girl in the Philippines. She suffered from club foot, but Operation Blessing provided her with treatment to correct it. Today, Casey is fully recovered and thriving thanks to our generous partners. Here's one from Mexico. Pregnant women there are happy to receive mosquito-eating gambusia fish from Operation Blessing. They'll take them home and use them to destroy mosquitoes that carry the Zika virus. These tiny fish will help protect their unborn children. And certainly, if you're paying attention to the news, you know, this is a major, major problem the world is facing. And uh, through Operation Blessing, which is an outreach of the Christian Broadcasting Network, we are able to... Uh, improve the lives of families and children across the globe. We wanted to share some of this great news with you. You know, a lot of times we'll show you uh, longer format stories about what we're doing around the world. And as news has come in like this, we're just excited to let you know as soon as we can what you're doing as a partner with the 700 Club. We'd love for you to get on board with us if you're not already. You can call us at 888-777-1999 or log on to 700clubinteractive.com. And I've been a 700 Club member for quite a while. And I'm still wowed, Terry, when I find out uh, so, what I'm helping make possible yeah. when I didn't even know it. And I, like many of you, do not always know every, even though I'm here. You know, it's so broad. There's so much that's going on. And I, this whole Gambusia Vish thing, I think, is such a creative way of making a difference. There are just a lot of illnesses that are mosquito-borne. So this makes a huge difference. And hats off to Operation Blessing. Amen. Very creative. Well, coming up, an artist in L.A. makes an interesting discovery. A little black and white photo, and that's when, like, the first oil graph was born. See how his art finds beauty within darkness. That's next. Well, he's not your typical artist. In his studio, you might find ancient weapons, fake blood, and torn photographs. Halfway through his art process, the picture looks entirely black. But L.A. artist Kevin Raleigh says light can always emerge from darkness. The art of, of telling the biblical narrative kind of is, at least to me, seems that it's almost vanished. And so being able to tell these stories, it's like I, ha it's like I have to. You know, there's, there is no other way there's no there's no not doing it it's like this burning thing where you 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 must do this thing a number of years ago actually it was 94 um i was looking for an, emer an emergent look in the work uh like light coming out of the darkness and i couldn't get it traditional i couldn't get it with lighting i couldn't get it in the dark room so i thought i need something actually physically dark to, to get the to get the look. And I didn't know if it was gonna work or not, because I remember when I was a kid, we used to do these, uh, I don't know if you ever did this, but we had the like colored paper and you put like black ink over it and you'd scratch off the black to reveal the color. Um, I'm thought, you know what, that should work with a photo. So I got a little black and white photo, got some black oil paint, covered it over, took some tissue paper and rubbed it off. And I'm like, 
that's it. And that's when like the first oil graph was born. I was reading Judges and I came across the story of Jephthah's daughter. And it was this heartbreaking, tragic story. And I realized just how visual and powerful everything was. And that's when the Lord was like, Judges. The difficulty with Judges is, one, it is just so epic. You know, I mean, like Stations of the Cross where it was 15 pieces, you know, in a set very, in, 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 in set pieces, you knew which ones are. Me looking out over the whole panoply of judges and like, well, what part do I tell? And there was that whole point where it's like, I need, I need help, you know, and that's where things get, that's where things would get tricky. For each piece, you know, sometimes it's a month, depending, it's a month lead up time of building all the props, the set pieces, the pillars, the whatever. I realized getting into it, it's like, I can't get away with, you know, bathrobes and bed sheets anymore. You know, this can't look like a, you know, a Christmas play. It's like this thing had to be costumed. The props had to be in place. It had to look authentic. So I had to treat it more like, you know, Lord of the Rings than, than you know, than, you know, a church play. So yeah, it's absolutely intimidating. There's still parts of it I still have no idea how I'm going to do, you know? There's, I, I've got to do Samson and a Thousand Philistines. I'll figure it out. So there's lots of times where, yeah, it was very discouraging, where I'm like, I don't know, how can I keep, I wanna keep going, but how can I keep going? The greatest criticism I've had against the work has come from inside the institutional church. Flat out, I'd say, I would arguably even, I, I would say even 100% has come from inside the church. This work just freaks them out. You know, because you see violence, you see sin, you see all these things. And it was interesting because a lot of times what the people would use as a, uh, a, a scriptural um, criticism would be like Philippians 4. They said, well, whatever is true, whatever is noble, what is beautiful, and you know, all this beautiful list. And I said, well, you know, this doesn't, you know, line up with that. And I was like, well, the problem with that is what is true. <laughs> see, there's the kicker, what is true. And the problem is, is that truth isn't, isn't pretty. And truth isn't always beautiful. Truth is truth. True is that we, we live in a fallen creation, that sin is real, that evil is real. But the real truth is that, you know, Jesus has overcome the world and a light has come into the world and it cannot, you know, be overcome. That's, that, that is also true. So we have all these things that are true and to not show the darkness with the light is really disingenuous. It's a, it's, a, it's a lie. The resurrection needs the crucifixion, and the crucifixion needs the resurrection, or both lose their significance. If I likened the, the work and the process to, to, you know, scripture, and I was praying about this a couple days ago, what comes to me is, well, is the very beginning of scripture. Because what was the first thing that God did? He, he created. He says, you know, I, um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And he said, let there be light, and there was light. And then he separated the light from the darkness. And I'm going, that's, that's what I'm trying to do with each piece. You know, you see people who get it. <clears throat> they get what's going on in the work. The, the Spirit has touched them through the work. And to know that that has happened through the art that God had me make, that it somehow could impact someone for eternity, I mean, there's no other, there's no other comparison. That's like, that's the top, man. That's, 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 that's the high point. I'm sure that some of Kevin's work is probably very disquieting to people yeah. because of the truth that's within it. You know, the Bible says Jesus was so marred by what was done to him that he was literally unrecognizable, but that's not the way we usually see him portrayed. So, And, and Kevin's work is certainly a reminder, isn't it, that the Bible is not a dull volume. <laughs> no. I mean, it, get, it yeah. gets into some serious dark issues. And I know you and I kind of chuckled a little bit when he mentioned his criticism has all come from inside the church. Mm -hmm. Not surprising, right? Yeah. And we can be quick to point out, well, let's focus on the hope and the light of Christ, mm -hmm. his redemptive story, which certainly is true. But 
you know, sometimes we don't like to peer into the darkness and, and we may be quick to criticize his work, but what about the sin in us, the darkness in us that we refuse to look into, we refuse to address and let God work in those areas? Mm -hmm. And you know, unless you fully understand how great the darkness is, you can't really fully appreciate how marvelous and amazing the light is. So a good message for all of us to think about And today. if And if an artist is not using the violence just for show, but to glorify God, it's a exactly. wonderful, wonderful way to teach all of us. We want to remind you that even when the show is over, you can still interact with us on social media. We'd love for you to post your comments and questions and prayer requests on our Facebook or Instagram page. And if you're away from your TV show uh, when we're airing, you can just go to our MyCBN app and download the app to your phone or computer. I'll leave you these words from Psalm 147. The Lord delights in those who fear Him, who put their hope in His unfailing love. We'll see you next time.